All right, welcome. Today's vinyasa flow practice is a practice of cultivating balance. And anytime I hear balance, I am reminded about what I thought balance was when I first started practicing yoga. I thought that balance was, in a way, you know, you hear this, find the balance, find your work-life balance, that in some way, it was some kind of destination or some place that you arrived to and you were there, or it's something static. And this is something I've heard a lot from uh, friends and students when uh, Corona, COVID-19, uh, knocked us off balance, is that I'm trying to find my balance. I'm trying to find balance again. And the more I've been practicing yoga, the more I've been appreciating the gift of yoga, of what it means to cultivate balance, and what balance is. And balance is not somewhere that we arrive to, as most of us who showed up to practice today, you know, during these challenging times. It is a constant, or can be seen as a constant uh, response to change, which means we are finding through movement, right, within our falling, falling off of that, out of balance, Within the falling through movement, we are finding the relative place of stillness and center each time in which life is swirling around. So that will be our practice, our intention for our mat today, so that we can practice certain skills. And again, it's a practice on our mat so we can carry it off the mat. Okay, so yay, it's important to also bring in a sense of curiosity and playfulness. So we'll first start off in a comfortable seated position, just to have some stillness time to center ourselves. So you could be kneeling, you could be sitting on a rolled blanket or extra mat, comfortable position, closing your eyes. And you, as you allow yourself to drop into this shape Notice how your mind is not completely still. Noticing through the relative stillness, again, relative stillness of your body, the movement of your mind. You're bringing awareness to the movement of your mind, your thoughts, Begin to bring awareness to the quality of your thoughts, the tone, the texture of your thoughts. Again, through this relative still shape of our body, again, relative, we are able to become more clear and more aware of the movements of our mind. And through this awareness, We are able to see that we have no need to try to deny these thoughts, but simply to bring awareness. So in a way, we're not pushing away the thoughts. We're embracing the movement of our mind as we do on the mat, off the mat, whether it be the mind, the posture, a certain situation. We're embracing the ebb and flow. One of the biggest gifts for me of practicing yoga is the ability to respond rather than to react. And so we're cultivating our adaptability to this ebb and flow, starting with the awareness of the mind. And now dropping that awareness of the mind, right, the thinking mind, further down into the body, feeling the points of contact on the ground. Right? Often when we feel like we're knocked off balance, we may try to, and there's a time for it for sure, 
We may try to think our way out of a challenging situation or where we feel unbalanced. But we can also bring it down into the body. So from the head down into the ground to those points of contact. So we're reminded that we are supported, that we can bring our awareness down into our body to those points of contact in which to ground ourselves, in which we can root to rise up. So today's practice will be a practice of noticing where our mind wants to go. And we can't control our mind, but we can direct it. And first, that starts with awareness. And then spreading that awareness more evenly throughout our body, all the way down to the ground to those points of contact. And slowly open your eyes, maintain that sense of rootedness to the points of contact. Through movement, we'll find stillness or we'll explore stillness. It's a center point, again, it's relative. Hands to the side, fingertips can be pointing out and release your feet so they're wider than your hips. So first we'll start off with embracing movement. Let the knees fall from one side and the other as we explore some windshield wipers. Right? It's within the falling through movement that we can find balance. And also through the movement, we can also explore different planes of being in which we can respond from. Two more times, each direction. This is also physically. Nice prep work for our hips to support our bigger movement. And then let's bring it to center. Cross your right shin in front of the left. Interlace your hands and prepping the wrists circle around about six times each direction. So this is uh this will be one of our foundations in downward facing God. We want to make sure we're prepping and inviting in a sense of adaptability in our foundation to respond appropriately and bring the palms together, bring the elbows out wide, open the arms out, flip the palms up, open up through the chest, elbows with the chin slightly, and as you exhale. Bring the hands to the center, round through the spine, tilt the pelvis back and flexing your spine into a cat-like posture. And three to four more times with that own breath. All right, so again, through the movement, we can find our sense of center, our relative still point as we move through any areas of stuckness and stagnation. Right, stuckness and st stagnation our manifestation of rigidity, right? And thinking about rigidity versus stability. Right? From a stable place, we are able to respond, but from a rigid place, we are not able to respond in the way that we would like to. We'll bring it to center, open the arms wide, like you're about to receive a big hug from yourself. Right elbow over left elbow, opposite hand, opposite shoulder. You can let your head tilt to one side. Take a moment of self-care. You can also think of this gesture of self-care as your relative still point and center to come back to as life swirls around. We're going to stay here, keeping right elbow over the left or back of the hands together, cross up the wrist, freeing up our wings, lift the elbows up and lift the back of the heart as you exhale round inward and circle around three times each direction to let your chin follow the direction of your elbows and again first acknowledging the movement the movement possibilities and still maintaining a sense of groundedness whatever is touching the mat the floor and we'll meet, arms wide open, give yourself another big hug, this time left elbow on top. You can nod inward, do a couple more nods here, release the neck. Stay here, left elbow on top of right or back of the hands or cross of the wrists, palms together. 
Lift the back of the heart, but maintain rootedness through the sitting bones as you lift inner body buoyantly. And exhale, rounding inward. Three times, circling around. Nice and rooted through those points of contact, your sitting bones, maybe the outer edges of your feet. Maintaining a sense of groundedness. To help support the movement. And after your last round, open the arms wide and release your hands to the ground. Cross your left shin in front of the right. And interlace your fingers, press the palms in front. Lift the armpits up, plug the arm bones back, and then reach the palms up. Keep the back of the skull long, so drop the chin. And here, it's more relatively still posture, the still shape. There is a sense of movement. And then direct that awareness to the sitting bones. To press down to, to lift the ribs as you lift your arm bones up and pressing thumb side and pinky thigh evenly up to the sky. So best you can, you're creating equal stretch, equal strength in both directions. And slowly release your arms. Keep that awareness of sitting bones and those points of contact in the ground. Walk your hands forward. So you're coming into a cross-legged forward fold. And notice that your mind Noticing where your awareness goes, it most likely for most of us goes to the sensation of stretching in the hips. When your mind loves to go, our awareness goes first to sensation, that, and that's great also. It's a great tool. There's a lot of power in noticing sensation. But for today's practices, we cultivate Balance, our focus will be bringing the awareness and tension to our foundation, to what's touching the ground. So literally feel your fingertips touching the ground. Feel your sitting bones, maybe the outer edges of your feet touching the ground. As you create equal stretch, equal strength. And those, between those points of contact, and then slowly walk the hands back in. And we'll switch other shin in front. Lengthen through the spine and walk your arms forward. Again, noticing, let the mind do what the mind wants to do. <laughs> so we're always, we're like fluctuating, we're Embracing the ebb and flow, the movement of the mind, and dropping that awareness of the movement of the mind to the ground, to those points of contact to the ground. What happens often when we feel knocked off balance, when we feel overwhelmed, overstressed, is that even our breath and everything goes upward, our breath gets stuck in the upper chest. We have the thinking mind taking over. And what could be a helpful tool is to bring the awareness to whatever's touching the ground, the fingertips, the sitting bones. And slowly walk your hands back. Let's make our way onto hands and knees, onto all fours. So feel free to move in any way that feels good. Maybe a couple more cat cows, invite in any other circular movement you'd like. Uh, the traditional yoga practice tends to be pretty linear, which is great for direction and focus, but it doesn't move traditional practice in all of them possible movement planes. So we want to make sure we are still acknowledging other planes of movement and other planes in which to respond from, right? As we work with our tissues, it affects how we think and how we move. So in a way, we're balancing out our, our habits of moving and being. We'll 
make our way to downward facing dog. We're slightly in front of the shoulders. Spread the fingers wide to so a strong wide foundation. Curl the toes under, lifting your hips up and back. And notice where your mind goes here. Okay, our awareness, our mind might go to the, to the sensations first. Let it go, let the mind go where it wants to go. And then spread that awareness more evenly through your body and down into whatever is touching the ground. The fingertips, pressing the fingertips down and forward, pressing the balls of the feet down and back. And then relax your neck. Relax your jaw, soften your eyeballs and your temples. Okay, so draw that tends to bubble up. And we don't feel a sense of groundedness. A couple more cycles of breath here for three, two, and one. Lift your heels, bend your knees, and set your right foot forward. Okay, coming into a low lunge. About right knee over right ankle for this variation. And come up onto your fingertips. We have a pretty high ratio of sensors, we'll put shortly, in the fingertips. All right, so the points of contact are the right foot, left foot, and your fingertips. Now, as you allow the hips to lower, allow the top of the left thigh bone to lift up. And then press your feet, so your right foot and the ball of your left foot, into the ground, reach the left to back, and then press your fingertips down and broaden through your chest and breathe here. And notice what you notice, and then spread that attention into your points of contact and press away from the ground so that we're not just casually placing our feet and our fingertips on the earth. We're having a relationship, a dialogue as we press away so that we're not collapsing. And we have this sense of moving down and rising up, even in the fingertips. And then mindfully as you can, releasing, hands down, step back into downward facing dog and reestablish your awareness down into your fingertips, into the balls of the feet, pressing the fingertips down and forward for this variation, balls of the feet down and pull them out apart. So you're pressing, sticking that down with your hands and your feet. Lift your heels, bend your knees, and as you exhale, Left foot steps forward. Rising up onto your fingertips. Feel, literally feel your fingertips in the ground. And as you allow the hips to lower, the top of the right thigh bone lifts up. Okay, so instead of propping ourselves up also, like we don't want to be rigid and how we prop, how we uh, hold ourselves up, allow the breath to support you through the perimeters of your physical being. Right, so you instead of casually placing your hands on the ground, your feet on the ground, press away, press the right heel back for this variation, reach the heart forward, lengthen the sides of your waist. You can even begin to notice the points of contact in the front foot or corners of the feet down for three, two, and one. Step it back into downward facing dog. Float the foot forward into plank pose, shoulders over the wrists. And again, press the sticky mat down with your hands and your feet, whatever's touching the ground. Feel how your arms and your shoulders are working, and then ask your abdominals and your legs to work just that hard. Reaching the heels back for three, two, one, lower your knees down, lower forward and all the way down into sphinx pose. Elbows below your shoulders. And notice what you notice. The mind, the awareness might first go to the curvature of your back. And then from there, notice the points of contact. Pressing your hands down, elbows down, tops of the feet down, pubic bones down. 
Right? There can be a tendency to collapse in this pose. For this variation, again, rooting down, rising up, feeling the inner hands, the inner fingers, the inner wrists, the inner elbows into the ground. For another three, two, and one. Slowly releasing forehead all the way down, however way you want to transition. Downward facing dog, hips up and back. Lift your heels, bend your knees, and walk your feet to the top of the mat. Feet hip width distance apart. Coming into forward fold. Feel your feet, feel your fingertips in the ground. And let's bring more awareness to our feet. So allow the hips to sink a little bit more back, weight more into the heels, not because it's the right thing to do, but to bring awareness to our habitual patterns in this shape, or in general, but habitual patterns in general, but in this shape, to bring the hips back so that we can compare and contrast to find our way to center. And then shift the weight a little too far forward now. Keep the fingertips on the ground to the balls of your feet and begin to feel the heels lifting away from the ground. And sometimes we need to go the opposite ends to find our center. And I'm finding equal distribution of your weight between the balls of your feet and your heels so that you're folding over the columns of your legs. So see if you can distribute the awareness and the contact and the weight evenly through the balls of the feet and the heels. As you unload your spine, Press down through those points of contact, release your neck, and slowly make your way into a halfway lift. Bring your hands to your hips, shoulder blades onto your back, elbows to the spine. With a long spine, press down into those points of contact and come all the way on up into your mountain pose. Maintaining that sense of center, equal distribution between front of the foot, back of the foot, inner foot and outer foot, release your arms to the side, sweep your arms up and extend your mountain pose. Interlace your fingers, a little rinse cycle here, so in a jar. So can you maintain that sense of awareness in your feet touching the ground as you swirl around five times each direction? Right. As we maintain a sense of groundedness to the feet, we become more okay with a little bit more, how do you say it, safer with life swirling around us, grounded. And then releasing your hands to your heart, pausing here. We'll add on some of those low lunges to sun salutation A variation. Maintain that sense and awareness of the ground. Root down, rise up, extend a mountain pose. And as you exhale, folding forward. Coming into a halfway lift, press the feet into the ground, lengthen the sides of the waist. And as you exhale, step your right foot back into a low lunge, press down to the feet, fingertips, lengthen the heart forward. Exhale, step it back into downward facing dog. Float forward into plank pose, high pressure position. Press the hands and feet down, downward facing dog. For this variation, bring your feet together, your inner feet together, and reach your right leg up to the sky. And notice where the mind goes, the attention goes. Probably into lifting up the right leg, but can you direct the attention to the points of contact in the ground? Pressing the fingertips down and forward and pressing the left foot down and back. And breathe here for three, two, one. Step your right foot forward, low lunge, press the feet, fingertips down. And exhale, step the back foot forward, forward fold. Evenly distribute the weight, front and back foot. Halfway lift, whatever halfway lift you like. 
Exhale, forward fold. Down, rise up. Extend in mountain pose. Exhale, hands to your heart. Meeting with the other side. Through down, rise up. Exhale and hold. Halfway lift. Left foot steps back, go lunge press, feet and fingertips down. Exhale, downward facing dog. Plank pose, press hands and feet down, abs working, legs working, downward facing dog. Feet together. Left leg lifts up. Notice where your mind and intention goes. Then press the fingertips, the hands down and forward and root down through the right leg. Right foot for three, two, one. Left foot steps forward. Low lunge. Inhale, press down. Exhale, step forward. Forward fold. Halfway lift in half. Forward fold, exhale. Root down, rise up. Extended and exhale, hands to your heart. Moving on to a different variation of sun A. Release the arms to the sides, rooting down to the feet, rising up. Exhale and fold. Halfway lift. Right foot steps back, back knee down. And root down, rise up. Inhale. Whatever's touching the ground, press away. On your next exhale, step it back into downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose. Keep those points of contact aware. Exhale, lowering down. Coming either into locust, cobra, or dog, whatever you like, but pressing your hands down, pressing the tops of the feet down, and then downward facing dog, whatever way you want to transition. Inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, right foot flips forward, back knee down. Sweep it up, press down, move down from the pelvis to the legs, lift the upper body. On your exhale, step it forward, forward fold. Halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Root down, rise up, extended, and exhale, hands to your heart. One more time, root down, rise up. Folding forward, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Left foot steps back, exhale, back knee down. Root down, rise up. Exhale, hands down, step back into down dog. Plank pose, inhale and as you exhale, lowering down. Cobra, locus, upward facing dog. Press the ground away, those points of contact. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Lift your heels, bend your knees, inhale, left foot steps forward, back knee down, root down, rise up, inhale. Exhale, hands down, stepping the back foot forward, forward fold. Halfway lift. And exhale. Root down, rise up. And exhale, hands to the heart. Adding on just a little bit, root down, rise up. Exhale and fold. Halfway lift. Right foot steps back. Back knee down, root down, rising up. And exhale, step back into downward facing dog. And again, bring your feet together, inner edge of the feet together, and lift your right leg up to the sky. And again, notice the foundation of your hands and your foot. And then open up the right hips. We're making little changes that we need to respond to and bend the right knee. And notice maybe your mind is bringing its attention to the stretching of the top hip. Bring that attention now down to your hands and your left foot. Breathing here for three, two, and one. Stepping your right foot forward, back knee down, root down, rise up, and exhale, top of the mat, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Root down, rise up, extended. And exhale, hands to your heart. Meeting with the left, root down, rise up. Exhale and fold. Halfway lift. Left foot steps back, back knee down. Root down, rise up, inhale. 
Exhale, hands down, step back, downward facing dog. Feet together, left leg lifts up. Bring the awareness to the hands and the right foot. Open up the left hip, bend the left knee, and notice how you need to respond to that little shift, that, that change. Again, awareness to your hands and your right leg for three, two, one, stepping your left foot forward. Back knee down, root down, rise up, inhale, and exhale. Top of the mat, fold forward. Halfway lift, inhale, and forward fold, exhale. Root down, rise up, and exhale, hands to your heart. Bring your feet together, the inner edges of your feet together here. And just notice how that may feel like a little bit more of a balancing act for you. Notice the movement in the stillness. Notice the subtle micro shifts to accommodate that change in your foundation. As we embrace the ebb and flow, the constant changes that are happening around us. And we're trying to grasp or grip one constant state of what we think should be balanced, how that may keep us from responding appropriately. There needs to be an element of relaxation in which to respond from. Curiosity is also a, and playfulness also comes from a place of relaxation. And you can keep your feet together or you can separate your feet for chair pose. So hinging at the hips first, bending your knees, you can squeeze the knees together if you want fingertips to the ground, reaching your fingertips forward or toward the ceiling and wall meet. So meet yourself where you are. And as you exhale, fold forward. Over the columns of your legs. So distribute the weight evenly through the front and the back of the foot. Halfway lift, inhale, and as you exhale, step your right foot back. We'll make our way to a high lunge. So as the hip floor, lift the top of the right thigh bone up, bring your hands to your hips. The hands to hips. And press the hips down with your hands to root the feet down so you're not casually stepping your feet on the mat. You're pressing down, side body nice and long, and then interlace your hands and press the palms up. So the lifting and the pressing of the palms up lift the arm bones, which are attached to the ribs which help lift and lengthen your spine. So those points of contact, press down into the ground and lift for three, two, and one. Slowly releasing, hands down and step to the front of the mat. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Forward fold, exhale. Root down, rise up, inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart. Again, bring the inner feet together if you like. Just noticing how that feels. Notice how your body and your breath want to respond. Make sure it's from a relaxed place. Not a collapsed place, but from a relaxed place. Your chair pose, bend the knees. One breath, inhale, and as you exhale, fold forward. Halfway lift. Left foot steps back. Right, notice what's touching the ground, press away, and bring your hands to your hips. And imagine you're hugging your outer hips in. Take your hands to press the pelvis down from the center of the pelvis, press down to those points of contact. Invite an inner body buoyancy as you press down. Reach your arms up, interlace your hands the weird way. Press your palms up. So the arm bones lift the ribcage, so lift and lengthen the spine for three, Pressing through that right heel, especially two. And one, mindfully as you can, releasing the hands down and step to the front of the mat, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale and exhale, forward fold. Root down, rise up, extended, and hands to the heart. Flowing on for some different standing postures with the same awareness of our foundation. Root down, rise up, inhale, exhale, and fold. Halfway lift, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale, step back. 
And lift your heels, bend your knee. Now send your right foot forward, spin your back foot flat, and then change directions. And walk your fingertips into warrior dog to the front left corner of your mat in the diagonal. So for here, feel your feet. Pull the outer right hip back, press through the back heel bone and lift the back inner thigh. Feel the feet and then press the fingertips down into the ground. Right, so pressing down to those points of contact. Take your left hand to your left hip and make your way on up into warrior two. So you can take your right hand, you can bring both hands to the hips. You can take your right hand to gently suggest this external rotation of the right thigh bone here. And then press through the left heel a little bit more. So allow like the back leg to get like six inches longer. And then reach your arms out to the side. And then notice the engagement of the muscles as you press your right foot down into the ground a little bit more. Rather than dumping into the right foot, press it down. And then from that place of rootedness, through both feet, straighten out your front leg. Triangle pose, lowering down, less than you normally do. Because there tends to be a reaching and a grasping to go as far down to the ground as you can, and that could promote collapsing, which is what we don't want, at least for today's practice. So hand might be on your upper shin. And then press down through the feet again. So from the two halves of your pelvis, from the center of your pelvis, Press your feet down into the ground. So can you take the, the place where your mind wants to first go? Maybe it wants to reach down to the ground. Maybe it wants to go for more sensation in the back leg or the back of the hamstring. Can you distribute that awareness more evenly throughout the body, especially through the feet? For three, two, and one. Bend the front knee into warrior two, maintaining that awareness of your feet. Exhale, hands down to the ground, step the back into downward facing dog. You can take a high little push up in between if you like. We'll meet in downward facing dog. And then inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, and step your left foot forward, spin the back foot flat. So we're taking pretty straightforward postures to explore this concept of grounding to cultivate balance. Warrior dog. So again, notice what's going on with your feet. Pull the outer left hip back and press through the back heel so you're not collapsing that back inner thigh. Take your right hand to your right hip, belly ribs in, press through your feet. So you find your power in the path through your feet, warrior two. Again, you can take your left hand to gently suggest the flesh to externally rotate here. And then press with the right heel a little bit more. Feel like your right leg is getting longer by six inches. And then not casually pressing your feet into the ground. Press down, especially that left heel. Feel like how that activates more of the muscles to help support the pelvis. For three, you can have a soft gaze. Two, and one. Awareness of your foundation straight in the front leg. Hinge over the left hip crease here. And only going only uh, less, go less than what you normally do. Right, so can you notice where your mind wants to go as far as sensation? And distribute that awareness evenly throughout the body all the way down to the feet. And even though your head and your fingertips aren't touching anything, well, your bottom fingertips are, press those down. Imagine you're pressing your right fingertips to the sky, lengthening to the crown of the head for three, Actually, the back of the skull. Two, and one. Bend in the front knee. Warrior two, keep that power on the path through the feet. And exhale, hands down to the ground. And step the back down dog, or take a high and low push up. Whatever you need. As you inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees. As you exhale, step up or float to the top of the mat. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, your down, rise up, extended. Exhale, hands to your heart. Let's explore tree pose. May or may not be a different variation for you. Many ways to set up. For this variation, let's have our right leg as the standing leg. Bring your hands to your hips. 
As you bend the left knee, you're going to open up. So externally rotate to the left thigh bone through the left hip socket. And feel your foot, especially the right foot in the ground. Feel the ball, the left foot in the ground. Press down and feel your outer hips hugging in. So you get a hug from the inside or from the outside in, hugging in. And without using your left hand right now, so this might be also something different for you. Notice how your mind reacts to this sort of change. Sliding your left heel up as far as you can without dumping into the right hip, and then lower down. And do that about three to five more times. You may feel some muscles that have not had an opportunity to fire up when you use your hand to lift your foot. So notice your response there without any judgment. And after your third or fifth round, we will use our left hand to hold on to the left ankle for this variation. And again, notice the ability of the body to respond to finding a relatively still point through movement. Right? Instead of trying to push the movement away, which is our, ability, our body's ability to find our center, we're embracing the ebb and flow. And then placing your left foot wherever you like. Hug the two together. Bring your hands to your heart. Many ways to approach this. We could do a whole class on Q-pose. Press your hands together. And again, feel that right foot in the ground. Hug the outer hips in. And then reach the arms up. And just as a reminder, nobody really cares if you fall. <laughs> and if you're going to fall, you can make it part of the dance. Best you can, you're responding from a relaxed, playful place. Breathing. And as mindful as you can, bring your hands to your heart as you lower your left foot to the ground. Take it out, side to side if you want. Wiggle the arms. Left leg standing leg, hands to hips. Make sure you're not getting too sassy in that left leg. So press through the four corners of the left foot, or three. That's also another thing. From the outer left hip in. And sliding the right leg up and lower down. So we're actively using the muscles. Rather than taking our hand and pulling our leg up, we are bringing awareness to the muscles that help support us through the action and to keep us supported in the shape. And after your last round, you can hold on. A lot of times I don't hold on, but for today, for a balance practice, hold on. And again, notice your body responding. Notice what happens with your thoughts when you do fall. And placing the foot inside, bring your hands together. So allow this practice, especially this tree pose, this is the first one like a posture, balancing posture we're exploring in this class. Your dialogue, what's the dialogue? Reaching up, pressing the points of contact in the ground away, hug the outer hips in. In many ways, there, there is no balance. <laughs> and we sway, and we find the relative center to meet the life swirling around us, the changes, and we begin to have this dialogue so we can navigate constant change. And as mindfully as you can, hands to your heart, and releasing, right foot down, shake it out, bounce it out, however way you need. Let's meet at the top of the mat, rinse cycle, your down rise up. Exhale and fold over the columns of your legs. So bend your knees if you need to. Distribute the weight evenly through the feet. Halfway lift. Exhale, hands on the ground. Step back into down dog. Lift your heels. Bend your knees. And step your right foot forward. And you'll spin your back foot uh, about 45 degree angle. We're going to make our way into a variation. There's many variations, but a variation of warrior one, and it's a variation of warrior one and a half. So as you press through the feet, come on up, bring your hands to your hips. And you're going to have your belly and your inner body face the front left corner of the mat. 
And then straighten out the front leg. Find your feet, four corners of your feet. Take your left hand to your left glute. Engage it. Keep it engaged as you bend the front knee again. You might find it wants to disengage. <laughs> and then bring your hands to your hips. Strengthen the front of the back thigh. Press down from your pelvis down until it's inner body nice and buoyant. Bring your hands to your heart. And now the hips may turn towards, for one duration, towards the front, but wherever they stop, they stop. You can stay here or spin your belly and your heart to the front. Stay here or reach your arms up. Pressing through both feet evenly and inner body buoyant with the breath. Inner edge of the front foot, outer edge, heel, and ball the foot. On your next exhale, float the hands down, downward facing dog, hips up and back. And then inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees. Stepping your left foot forward, spin the back foot about 45, 60 degree angle. Many ways to set this up. This will be the suggested one today. Feel free to do whatever variation you like, or your one and a half. So belly and heart more towards the front right angle. Right hand to your glute, straighten out the front leg. Find your feet. Don't lose the connection to the power around the calf. Keep the glute engaged, bend to the front knee. Engage the front of the right thigh. Inner body nice and right. Lift the inner body hands to the heart. And the hips, where they stop, they stop, and then spin your inner body towards the front, the chest. And then reach up. So from the center of your pelvis, root down and rise up. You're also lifting the back of the ribs upwards so that you're not dumping into that lower spine for three, two, and one. Hands down to the ground. Step it back down dog. Take a hot a little push up if you like. And then next inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, exhale. Step up or float to the top. Halfway lift. And forward fold. Root down, rise up, extended, and exhale. Hands to your heart. Bring your feet together and then notice. Notice what you notice. Allow the breath to support you in your response to the changes in your foundation. We'll explore a variation of eagle pose. So we'll have the feet together, bend the knees, so you're coming into a chair pose. And for this variation, either keep your hands to the heart or reach your arms in a low V. Cross your right knee over your left knee Right knee over the left knee. <laughs> and don't hook, even if you have a hooking practice. And allow that right foot to be nice and relaxed. So to press down through the standing leg, inner body buoyant. You can stay here or right elbow underneath the left. Whatever variation you want today, you can bring the elbows down or the shoulder height, drop the shoulder blades, and then take the hook if that's part of your practice. You can do a whole workshop on that. Pressing through the bottom foot and firm the outer hips in. And soften your focus. Right, last week with teacher training, we went over how softening your gaze affects your nervous system. So we're going to bring a more relaxed response rather than a fight and flight survival reactivity. And as mindfully as you can. Releasing, you get through your wings upwards and arms to your side. Chair pose, hands to the heart, bend your knees. Crossing, left knee over right. You have your arms up to the sides for balance. An unhurried unrush. I know one of my habits, sometimes still, of getting into balancing postures is rushing into them. Unhurried, unrush, stay here, or left elbow underneath. Take the hook. You want to be able towards squaring your hips and your knees for center, whatever variation, elbows down. And soften your focus, soften. Right? The thing about an eagle is that they know when to focus, to sweep in for their prey, but they also know how to soften and broaden their vision to scope out the landscape. 
and also brings us more into parasympathetic rest and digest. Yeah, slowly releasing, reach the arms up if you want, and lower them down. Shake it out. You want to have a block nearby if you're going to use a block. Let's meet with the feet wide, facing the long side of the mat. Arms out to the sides. Turn your right toes to the right, right foot to the right. Left toes slightly turning to the right as well. Many ways to approach it. Bend the front knee to a square. Extended side angle, right forearm to right thigh, left hand to left hip. And look at your right foot in a little bit past. We're going to dance our way to half moon. With or without a block. Walk your left foot forward again, unhurried, unrushed. As you begin to shift the weight into the right foot, lift the left leg. As soon as the left leg lifts, I'm going to use a block this again. As soon as the left leg lifts, engage the left leg and have an active left foot. And have the block or the fingertips wider to the right and shift the weight slightly forward and you're going to use the fingertips on the ground or the block as a leg so whatever's touching the ground keep looking at your right foot that's balance right there is looking at your foundation and giving yourself time to respond appropriately press down right foot right hand lift the left leg stay here or reach your left arm up to the sky stay here or turn your gaze and again remember Nobody really cares if you fall down. Don't you get hurt? Nobody cares. <laughs> but in this practice, all the dancing happens when we fall. Really, that's what movement is. It's falling and finding your body weight. And left hand to left hip, bend your right knee. Reach back with that left foot towards the ground, coming into warrior two. Straighten out the front leg. Take the block with you if you want. Turn your toes to the left. So the block will be aligned with the left pinky toe a little bit wider. Finding your warrior two. Again, pressing through the right heel. Let the back leg get longer, about six inches. Press to the left heel. You find your power on the back. Through your feet. Extended side angle. Left hand to left hip. Look forward and down. Unhurried, unrush. Okay, so we make sure we're not rushing so we can still feel our feet, our sense of groundedness. As you shift the weight into your left foot, lift the right leg, block a little forward into the left. Make sure you're not locking the bottom knee. When you lock, that brings a sense of rigidity and less ability to adapt and respond. Keep looking at your left foot. Shift the weight a little bit more forward, press your left fingertips or hand into the block or ground. Activate the right leg. Animate everything and just a little bit more. A little bit more animation. Right shoulder back of the heart. Keep the gaze down. Right arm up to the sky. Turn your gaze if you want to the side. Noticing what happens, your thoughts, if you do fall. Remember, your, self, your sense of self-worth as a person is not attached to whether or not you fall. And then right hand to right hand. Bend your left knee, reach back for the landing. Woo! Warrior two, straight the legs, hands to hips. Rotate your toes in, heels out, slightly pigeon toed. Give our shoulders some love with the awareness of grounding. Interlace your hands, lengthen through the side body, shoulder blades onto your back, maintain the length in your legs, and fold. Notice what's going on with the hips. Where is the weight distributed in your feet? If anything, besides breathing in the shape, remember your feet. Remember your feet, right? You can dance between noticing where the mind wants to go, the attention wants to go, maybe in the shoulders, and then direct that awareness down into your feet. Notice how that lights up your legs. Relax your neck, relax your face. Slowly release, hands down, coming into a halfway lift, hands to your hips, press through your feet, and come all the way up to standing. Mindfully toe heel your feet together and give the knees and hop. 
So we're going to stay, as long as you have space, you're going to stay facing the long side of the mat, but notice what your response is to this subtle change. It's not the normal way we face on our mat as we explore warrior three. Hands to your hips. So we're facing the way in which we don't have the mat. <laughs> Shift the weight into your right foot, point your left toes back. Softness in your right knee. And then press through the four corners of your right foot as you make your way into warrior three. You can tilt slightly forward or bringing the torso parallel to the ground. And press the right foot down and press your left foot into the wall. I'm lucky enough that I actually have the wall behind me. <laughs> and reach your arms back. Notice where your mind wants to go. That's all good, no judgments. And then direct that awareness to your standing leg, your back leg. Imagine you're doing a headstand to the wall in front of you. And mindful as you can, bend your right knee, lift your left leg up. A little standing L, standing splits, more like standing L for me. For another three, two, and one. Bring our left foot forward, forward fold, softness in the knees, just let that go. Letting go of any judgments, any concepts of self-worth attached to how you dance in that posture. Hands to the hips, shoulders onto the back, long spine, come all the way on up. And we'll switch sides, feet about hip width distance apart, right toes back. Hug the outer hips in, softness in the left knee, and shifting the weight. Make sure you're not collapsing into the left tip and the left foot. Press the left foot down, spin the right hip down, and spin the inner right thigh to the sky. Stay here, arms to the sides. Make sure you have an active back foot. So that back foot is spinning, or rather stepping, an imaginary wall or a real wall. You can bring the arms forward and breathe for three, two, and one. Standing splits. Relax the head, relax the neck. And then slowly bring that back foot forward, forward fold, let that go. Unload your spine, release your neck. Relax your temples, relax your jaw, flutter your lips. And bring your hands to your hips, long spine, come all the way up. Just standing, one last little fun balance and pose. Many ways to approach this one, hand to big toe pose. Feel free to go to a wall, hand to the wall. Shift the weight into your right leg, draw your left knee into your chest. Again, noticing. Notice what you notice. You can even let the left knee hang out up there, or rather activate active flexion here without using your hand. Notice how the body wants to respond to the dance. All good. And you can take your first two fingers. This is one variation. To the left big toe. And from the outer hip in and lengthen your left leg as much as fair and friendly for you today. And then bend both knees again and bend the bottom knee. Now grab onto the outer edge of your left foot and stick your booty out just a little bit. Allow this to be playful as they're sinking into the earth so we can press away. Press the right foot down and then firm and wrap middle of left seat down and under as you pull your left hand back and press the four corners of your feet away from you. Stay here or right arm out to the side. Remember, it's all good to dance for three, two, and one. Back to this, you can releasing. Woo, shake it out. Feel free to go to the wall so you have that extra support to feel the action of rooting down into the ground. This side might be different. Ready to dance. Last dancing pose today. So you can use your hand or not. I like to lift my right knee up without using my hands and activate my foot because that reminds me how much I need to ground through the lifted foot as much as I do the bottom foot. And I can grab onto the big toe, pause. This side is so different for me, maybe for you. Keep a long spine as you work towards lengthening or you breathe into lengthening. It might not be straight, that's okay. 
And then bend the knees again. Grab onto the outer edge of the foot, the right forearm to the inside of the thigh. Bend both knees, reach the upper body slightly forward. Like you're doing a little bit of a fire hydrant here, okay? So I'm yielding into the earth. I'm creating a sense of connection to the ground here. And then I press down through the standing leg as I firmly wrap middle of right seat down to under, and I pull, I dance too, I pull my outer right foot in with my hand and press the left right foot, inner foot away. So I'm actually standing on the imaginary wall to my right side for three, two, and one. Mindfully as you can, releasing, shake it out. Let's flow to the ground for a couple of Flowing bridges, inhale, extended, exhale, fold. Halfway, lift. Downward facing dog. You can take a high little push up if you like, or we'll meet right into child's pose. Whatever variation you want. And for this child's pose, Enter, begin to enter a space of non-doing. Make the non-doing just as important as all the doing, we've been doing a lot of doing. So now those points of contact, instead of rooting down, allow those places to become heavier into the earth with each out breath. Allow this to be a posture of letting go, of offering up all the fruits of their practice and the acknowledgement in this constant dance of change allows us to also be a gesture, a shape of surrender and self-achieved submission. This is an important concept to also bring into cultivating a dance the ebb and flow of changes of balance is a self-achieved submission. Right? Self-achieved submission, surrender, it is that relaxed place in which we can respond instead of fighting and gripping and becoming rigid in the way that things, the way we think things should be. <laughs> On the mat, also off the mat. Allow this gesture of self-achieved submission to help you soften from the inside out to soften your habitual patterns of being the ways that don't serve you positively in this moment in this situation in this breath you can stay here as long as you like Make your way onto your back. About three to five flowing bridges. <laughs> so bring an element of flow. We did a lot of postures of form, relative stillness. Very important also to embrace the flow within the form. And we'll meet in your resting pose. Feel free to take any other posture you like. You can take feet as wide as the mat, knees resting in, one hand to your heart, one to your belly. A part of balance is also balancing the doing with the non-doing. Allow any of those points of contact to be heavier into the ground. As you soften from the inside out, allow the space in between your ears to soften as you allow the contents of your brain to settle. Allow your breath to settle. And you can take your palms together, rub your palms together, some, create, create some heat like in Sumiyagi and Karate Kid. 
And then place your heated palms to your eye sockets. Allow the fingertips to travel up to the crown of your head. Relax your shoulders. And slowly releasing. You can extend your legs if you want. Whatever shape you would like. If you have time to take a longer resting pose, if not, Begin to deepen your breath, gently turning your head side to side, bringing movement back to fingers and toes. And with awareness, draw your right knee into your chest and your left knee. Give yourself a hug of gratitude for this radical act of self-care. With awareness, roll on over to whatever side you want. Pause. Heads will last and come up and you push your way to a comfortable seated position. Eyes can be closed. You can overlap your hands on top of your heart. You can also have a soft gaze. And then carrying with you the intention to navigate change, to embrace the ebb and flow a life of movement. Think of one thing in your life that you are grateful for, no matter how big or small. And we'll end together with one cleansing breath. First, empty out all the air from your lungs. Inhale through your nose, fill up. And exhale.